Good Thursday morning. It snowed last night. It's a bit earlier than usual. As you guys remember, I said yesterday, Charlie comes today. So I just want to get all my ewes situated because they're here, there, and everywhere. And I got to move those ewes and rams that are breeding. I got to kind of push them back in the barn to get the other ewes up and into their pen closest to the handling system. And then I got to get it all set up for shearing. So I'm going to do that now. That's nice, Kinsey. Don't eat the dirty snow. Okay, we have all the ewes moved. Of course, they're in the back pens. So I had to move those all to the front two pens closest to the handling system where Charlie's gonna shear. Charlie and Alvin, I think, are coming together. There's 109, so we'll see how fast they go. They are pretty quick together. They're very woolly. They all have very bad haircuts that need fixed. <laughs> That's funny. I'm gonna flip the camera and show you kind of the setup here that we have. So Charlie likes to have a couple pieces of plywood that helps when, when he tips the sheep on their butts. He does that because it kind of helps immobilize them. He's gonna tip them and shear them on this and he can really move them easy. The, the problem with the concrete, it's really, it's grippy. It's got, and, it, and then it slows down the movement of the sheep and on the, this is nice and slippery, so he can really just, it's like linoleum. You can kind of, like your dog when it's running on linoleum and they do the big, the big slide. That same kind of idea here. He wants that sheep to be able to really move freely and easily. So that's why we do a couple, couple pieces of plywood that I've had in the barn. I usually keep it back there. I have them here for, oh, I've had them here for years. He brings his own crate that goes to about here-ish and it's got like a flip door. I, actually, I think he has two now because Alvin's here too. So he needs a st Alvin to have a station. Charlie will have a station. They will shear. Boom, boom. There'll be kind of a setup of a wool bag here that um, when they're done shearing, I grab the wool, put it in the bag. And then I actually have a lice treatment. So when the, the, it, when the sheep gets sheared, I like to give them a little treatment of uh, a little topical solution of lice treatment and that's so they some of that wool drop you see I would imagine is is probably a little bit of lice that can come in on the straw or and then once it's in your barn They just share it because they share everything and then the rest of the system is exactly same I'll bring in a few they'll go around here come in here and just wait for for Charlie to shear what I do do with the sheep most of the time is shut these this is where the guillotine gates come in real nice because this shearing, they, they like to back up because the noises and the movement, it, it's a little bit stressful for them. So they like to back up and then the poor ewes at the end get really squished. So these gates actually act as protectors. So you can only fit so many in here and they don't back up. So that's kind of a little, that's why I have those gates. Half the time I don't use them, but on shearing day, they get used.
Alvin Shearing goat. He sounds like a cow in there. Do you hear that? <laughs> you gotta go in the cow with you. Yeah. I hope my battery lasts. It says it's almost empty. Charlie. I don't know. I think you could have got five more in there. <laughs> Takes two grown men to shut it. 
sweating and panting. <laughs> It's late. It's almost six o'clock. It's been a big day. I don't know how those boys do it because I am exhausted. I could barely keep up with them, but it's so good that Charlie has Alvin to help. He used to have to do it all by himself, and uh, even though the pace for me was a little nicer, we can just we can just rock through it so much quicker, and Charlie's not near as tired, and uh, yeah, we did really well. Four full, very, very full bags of wool right here. Charlie's gonna pick them up another day. I will go show you the sheep. They look so good. So there they are. They look so white. It's amazing how much the lanolin in their wool really picks up the dust and dirt. It's really amazing. Hi, goat. She's so pretty. Goat. She wants to eat the straw. They have a manger full of feed and they would rather eat the straw. So they look really good. So that pen and that pen, there's about 40 in that pen and about 70 in that pen, give or take. Okay, I've asked Instagram to ask me questions. Anything about wool? I mean, I don't know a lot about wool, so I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna talk to my friend Romy if I have questions, but I can talk about shearing and I can talk about all the reasons why we do it and any questions that you have, but my Instagram is not loaded. What is your problem? Let's see what the questions are. Whoa, you guys. I just loaded 
I got my Instagram to work finally and you guys want to know about wool and about shearing. Like I have pages of questions so bear with me because the video can only be so long. All right, Jennifer T. Jitsky. I think, I think this is Jen Horn. I think I went to high school with Jen. Uh, really basic and obvious question. What do you do with the wool? Okay. So my wool just goes to the Canadian Wool Co-op, which is probably majority of the wool in Canada goes there. The problem is there's not much of a market right now, and with China being China, that was really where the majority of Canadian wool went. Uh, we don't have a lot of domestic use for it, which I think is an absolute, an absolute shame. And uh, there's a few people, Rome, my friend Romy, who I did a, I did a uh, farm visit with her a few videos back, well, was quite a few videos back now, um, she is really taking the wool seriously and she's got an online shop. I'll put the description below to her shop. So check her out if, if, uh, you want to know, if you want a local Ontario wool, but that's where the wool goes. Wooly Word wants to know, how often to, do they get sheared? So these ladies are due in eight weeks. And I try to shear all my ewes about six to eight weeks before they lamb. So I won't shear the sheep until I know they're pregnant. They're really, really critical when you get really close to giving birth. So I don't shear them too, too close, but I do want them close enough that they stay clean. That underside is really, really clean. The udder's easy to get onto. So that's kind of why I shear them, just to keep bacteria levels low and keep those lambs healthy and, and to get them onto the teat as fast as possible. So. I shear, so I shear every nine months. If they conceive when they're supposed to, then they'll, they'll get their lambing every nine months, which means they get sheared every nine months. So that's a good question. Uh, Ryan Schill wants to know, how did Alvin do? He's starting to make Charlie look slow. Um, Alvin did awesome. Now, poor Alvin is tall. Uh, I remember meeting him last time for the first time and I'm like, you're not, you're, you're a lot taller than I thought you were gonna be because of his name. Poor Alvin, I think it hurts his back because he's a very tall guy. So I did feel bad for him. He kept getting up and stretching, uh, but he's doing amazing considering this is like his first year, I think, uh, shearing. And I'm just so glad Charlie has help because it is a lot of work. Carissa Grimes wants to know, does wool die easily compared to other things? I'm gonna ask Romy this, but I'm gonna say, White wool dies, but the, the problem, you gotta keep the black wool separated because it doesn't die. You can't dye the black wool. So that is that's that is all I know. I will talk to Romy and I'll put a caption in here if I'm wrong. Okay, this question is from Ninu 20045 How much earn per fleece when you sell the wool? Uh, we actually don't make anything. We, it covers half the cost of Charlie and I haven't even checked the, I haven't even checked his invoice today, but I, I, I think we're lucky to even get that. So it costs us money to share. So we definitely don't do it to make money. We do it for the, uh, the, the health of the animals. Alana Witzke wants to know, hi Sandy, why do most producers not want black sheep? I have some and love it. I love black sheep. I actually would be fine with a flock of black sheep. So I like the white sheep too, but when you have a lot of white sheep, then the black ones are really special. So I think I just like sheep that look different. I'm kind of, I kind of like that. A lot of people are asking the same question, so I'm just trying to find some ones that are different. Okay, K. Henry, 1996 wants to know, what do you do with the wool off the stomach? I know you separate it from the rest. I throw it out. I don't know what to do with it. Sometimes it just get I put it in with the litter just so it's it's just added compost. Yeah, I don't I don't know where belly hair goes when you send it with a shear, but I've just I put it in a garbage bag and I just set it aside or I'll put it in with with the litter in the pens and then spread it on the fields later. Oh, Cass 12 wants to know are they relaxed when they sit on their bums for shearing? Yeah. Uh, you'll notice actually people a lot of people when they handle sheep whether they're, you know, trimming hooves or uh, or shearing like that, when you put them on their bums, and I don't know the science behind it, I have to Google it. When you put them on their bums, it immobilizes them. So they just, they just, they get calm and they kind of sit like a dog. So I don't, I don't know what it is that makes them do that, but, but yeah, that's why they do that because they don't flail and kick. I mean, they do a little bit, but for the most part, they, they sit pretty still. Yeah. 
not scared of me. Oh, this is a good question because I never really knew what this was too. Kurt Tamaja wants to know, what is the dark spot between the sheep's front legs? I am going to guess that that's kind of, so what he's talking about, like on, I'm going to call it a brisket, like on its like sternum right here, on the front of a sheep. They always have, it looks, from the camera, it looks terrible. It looks like a sore, like a bed sore. It's not. It's, it's totally calloused. So it's just really hard, hard, tough skin, kind of like my disgusting hands, like those right there. That's what it is. They're like calluses. And I think it's because that's where a lot of their sheep usually lay in the same position for the most part. And I think it's just a lot of pressure on that one pressure point right on their chest. It's like sleeping on their, if you're a tummy sleeper. I am not a tummy sleeper. What kind of sleeper are you guys? Tummy sleepers, back sleeper, side. I'm a side, I'm a left side sleeper because Mark's usually on the right. Ooh, okay, this is a good one because we're getting into winter. And I talked about this yes in yesterday's video and if you haven't seen that, you can check that out. How do they stay warm without their wool? So we are, it is chilly. It's probably zero degrees in here right now. So the thing with sheep, wool, obviously, wool is an insulator, so it keeps them really warm in the winter. It's like a, a jacket. However, there are ways to keep them warm. This is kind of weird, and I didn't know this. When you shear them in the winter, it's actually nice for the, um, for the humidity in the barn. It keeps the humidity down, and I didn't actually know that. So a producer actually told me that. Uh, when I was having some moisture issues my first year, she said, shear your sheep in the winter. I'm like, what? How are they gonna stay warm? She's like, feed them. So I have learned that keep them dry and bedded. I mean, there's a ton of pack in here, as everyone comments. Um, but the, the good thing about having a bit of a pack in the winter, there's a lot of heat generating. But what I do is I keep a nice, dry, fresh straw on the top of it and then they can nest in the straw and they stay really warm in that, in that straw and they, they nest, they like nest like a bird kind of. So, and the other thing is I have to watch really, really hard with these guys for their feed consumption. So if you see now, there's lots and lots of feed in the bunk and that is, there's, there's a little bit left always every single morning when I go to feed them. If that is licked clean tomorrow morning, then I know they need it to keep warm. So it's watching their feed and keeping them dry and bedded. So that's the two ways you can, uh, you can get away with shearing in the winter. Thank you so much, you guys, for giving me those questions. You guys amaze me with questions, and, and I love it, and I love taking the time to answer them at the end of these videos. I want to show you Ruby. She got done, too. Ruby, hello. Look how beautiful you are. Hello. You're gorgeous. Did Charlie do you? Or did Alvin? You want to scratch? Oh. It's so weird, you have no wool. Hmm? Does that feel good? Does that feel good? Hmm? You're beautiful. <laughs>